Hello everyone, I'm on Manchester Square in London and behind me you can see uh, Milner House with a blue plaque where Lord Alfred Milner spent um, the last 20 years or so of his life. So Lord Milner was born in Hesse, Germany. He was a quarter German, three quarters British. His father was a physician who'd later become a lecturer in English at the University of Tübingen, which um, was and is one of Germany's finest universities. So uh, Milner was, was bilingual. I grew up in Germany and later attended the University of Tübingen himself, came to the United Kingdom and attended King's College London. Um, perhaps surprising from someone who, who of such a distinguished background, he didn't go straight to one of the two great English universities, but he then did. He went up to Balliol College, Oxford. Now Balliol had really been put on the map by Benjamin Jowett. The head of that college is called Master, okay, of the, of the 39 colleges of Oxford University, the head of house as in the head of the college has a different title at the different um, colleges like there's provost of this one i can't remember president of st john's um, master of, of university college warden of merton uh, dean of of, of, of christchurch and so on but the head of house at, at, at balliol is the master so benjamin jowett was the one who really um put balliol on the map what, what was the what's the ditty about him i hope i can recall it now uh, um, uh, I am Benjamin Jowett, I am the master of this college. There is nothing that uh, to know that I don't know it. What I don't know isn't knowledge. Anyway, um, so then it became very famous and many administrators uh, went abroad from that college and politicians in the 20th century, usually liberal and labor ones, um, and except a lot of Rhodes Scholars, a lot of our Commonwealth cousins, people from Asia and Africa come to that college in increasing numbers. Not quite so in Milner's day. Anyway, Milner graduated, he was called to the bar but chose not to practice law. Um, he was a secretary to a number of uh, distinguished politicians. He was a liberal in politics and indeed um, stood for election himself in ha at Harrow, Harrow, that area of uh, London, the north uh, west part of the city, but uh, he didn't make the grade. Um, so he took the most intense interest in international affairs, including in colonial affairs. Um, and uh, he, he said that he um, was a British patriot and specifically an English patriot. He understood the difference between English and British, but a lot of, a lot of people don't. He doesn't seem to have identified with Germany at all, perhaps surprisingly. So he went to South Africa and he was determined to extend British control there. So the, um, the Afrikaners, as in people from the Netherlands, had landed in South Africa in uh, 1652 and they spoke Dutch but they gradually called themselves Afrikaners, as in they're white Africans speaking the Dutch language and started to call their version of Dutch Afrikaans. And um, they had moved north, they didn't want to be part of this British colony, um, uh, the Cape Colony, i.e. around Cape Town, or Natal, and they carved out little states for themselves uh, called the Transvaal Republic and the Orange Free State. Of course, the majority of people in all parts of South Africa were black, but um, the Orange Free State, the Transvaal, had its own political and judicial structures, and black people were not involved in that, did not have the right to vote. Um, now, in the Cape Colony and Natal, there were a very few black people who did have the right to vote. These were directly, well, it, it, British style administered. The Transvaal Republic and Orange Free State, they recognized the paramountcy of Queen Victoria. Well, what's that? It's an ambiguous phrase, perhaps constructive uh, ambiguity. Therein lies the rub. I don't want to go through all the particulars of it, but anyway, he wanted them to be properly part of the British Empire. They could have their elected parliament. So. Um, um, precious metals were discovered in the Transvaal Republic, the Orange Free State, um, on the Witwatersrand, and so people moved into the Rand, as in the, the ridge, the white water ridge, that's what it means, near Johannesburg. And um, um Paul Kruger, as in Old Paul, the president of one of these Afrikaner states, said this is a tragedy because, of course, gold poisons men's souls. We will, we will be greedy, we've had a virtuous people. And a lot of British, British people came in to work in mining, Uitlanders, foreigners, and they would not have the right to, to vote until they've been resident for 14 years and they had to be Protestant but anyway um, there have been an attempt at the Jameson raid in 1898 by Dr. Leander Starr Jameson uh, Rhodes's personal doctor to overthrow the Transvaal Republic it failed as in Cecil Rhodes that British guy who made a fortune in mining by some reckoning the wealthiest man in the world at one point wanted to expand the British Empire everywhere is a complete megalomaniac so his personal physician had tried and failed to do this. Was it with a nod and a wink from, from Lord Milner? More than likely. But once it, it ended in ignominious disaster, um, Milner disclaimed all knowledge. There was plausible deniability. So Leander Starr Jameson wasn't shot by the um, Afrikaners. I suppose they would have been within the rights to do so. He was not an army, was not a state, had not the right to declare war, was not wearing a uniform, 
they could have executed him as a terrorist, but they didn't do so, saying that will sanctify him in British eyes. They sent him back to the UK. He was um, sent to jail for a few years for some crime here. I'm not quite sure which law that would be breaking. I mean, attacking somewhere else, but isn't this to be handled in South Africa? Anyway, it was a crime, definitely, but I'm not sure specifically why, how it would be prosecuted here. But he was released after a few years. Um, people were hanged for rather less than that in those days. And, and he lived on until the First World War, died of natural causes. But back to Lord Milner, had his kindergarten. So very bright young barristers in particular came out from the United Kingdom to assist him. And, and some of them were going to have glittering careers as colonial administrators in other zones. Um, so uh, the, 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 the Kaiser had, had congratulated the Afrikaners on defeating this uh, British plot, the Jameson Raid. Anyway, 1899, that's when the Second South African War broke out, the Second Boer War. The Afrikaners often call themselves Boers, farmers, even though they weren't actually farmers in all cases. Um, so I shan't go into a blow-by-blow -blow account of that conflict, but uh, the United Kingdom thought it would very soon uh, crush this puny little army who had very little artillery and all the rest of it, but actually they were given a real run for their money and it took two and a half years. So eventually sheer weight of numbers prevailed. It was difficult to deal with this, this hit-and-run campaign. Um, Anyway, so, so Lord Milner, um, he was a civilian, he was an administrator, but uh, the military said he gave them really first-class cooperation. Now, he was a quarter German, he thought he, thought, he thought he might have paid more attention to German public opinion, who was aghast at what the United Kingdom was doing, saw the UK as the baddie in this, and were delighted to see the United Kingdom humiliated and have, have real trouble um, defeating these partisans. And the Kaiser in particular um, made little secret, secret of his sympathy for the Transvaal Republic and the Orange Free State, so did the French, so did, so did anyone who wasn't that friendly towards the United Kingdom. And indeed, in Ireland, they were part of the United Kingdom, uh, most people were home rulers, some people were republicans, wanted to completely split from Great Britain, often openly sympathised with um, uh, the Transvaal Republic and the Orange Free State. Uh, I remember reading When Youth Was, was, youth, when youth was Mine, or no, Where the Mountain Men Have Sown, by Michal O'Sullivan, and saying um, people used to call their dog Kruger, a mispronunciation of Kruger, after Umpor Kruger. Kruger was actually born in, born in South Africa to German parents, but became part of the Afrikaans community, as in Dutch-speaking. So, because uh, it's a Dutch, it's, sorry, it's a German sermon, Kruger, as in, as in like innkeeper, but to do with um, Kruger, as in the, the, the um, big beer glasses. Like when you're, when you're at, um, when you're at Oktoberface, they say, Die Kruger, and hold up your big, um, thing, um, two wine glass. So finally, uh, success had been achieved, he'd been administrator of the Transvaal Free State in 1901. Drained to the close. It was only in 1902, that May, when the Peace of Vereniging was signed, as in unity is the name of the town. It's a very generous settlement, um, several million pounds compensation for the Afrikaners for their farms which had been burnt, and that was obviously an exchange of prisoners and um, a union of South Africa to be formed and um, a great deal, deal of autonomy there and native affairs is in the rights of the black people to be determined in South Africa. Obviously, well, the black people were not going to give it given a voice in the rights that they were going to be granted and the Afrikaners rather wanted to deprive them of rights. The British weren't much better in that regard. So racial discrimination became um, formalised and legalised. There was already a lot of racist uh, legislation on the statute book. Um, anyway, Milner, he um, left South Africa after a few years. He was ennobled. He was in the House of Lords and he uh, continued to have a distinguished career here. In the, when, when the First World War broke out, David Lloyd George brought him back into the cabinet as a minister with that portfolio. He had had um, experience of uh, trying to run a civilian government uh, in wartime um, and was useful in explaining about public opinion abroad, what was the German thinking going to be and so on. So he died in 1925. That is Lord Milner, a figure who's largely overlooked these days. All right, toodaloo.